Well, good evening, everybody. Dave here in Altoona, Iowa. Welcome you back to Scale Models Midwest. We're done. And as you can see, really nice looking Salvinos JR73 Dodge Charger. Got it all nice and built. This thing is tight getting the uh, chassis into the body, but once it's in place, it's great. And I wanted to show you some of the things that I noticed when I came up with uh, putting this together, some things that were caused by myself, quite frankly, and others which, if you're building this kit, want to maybe take into account as you're building it. Okay, so as you can see, the underside, all nice and complete, box stock build, a little bit of weather detailing. I did get the shims in place like I wanted to. They're not perfect, but they look really good, ultimately, and, you know, I like it. If you look at the very edge of the chassis pan, it doesn't exactly match to it. I believe, um, I think uh, Lucas C on his channel, he has some tips on how he can get that extended or how you can extend it to where it'll fit the body panel. Um, for most of us, I don't think that's such a, a big deal, but you know what? If you're really into building these and you wanna go for all out detail, Definitely look at those channels, look at Lucas C, look at uh, Clay Kemp. They have builds on how you can extend these chassis plates. Also, when you're reading the instructions on putting the front of the chassis to the rear of the chassis together, make sure that you're putting it in the right spot. They have four holes, and this one uses hole number two, closest to the front. Uh, I believe the Monte Carlo uses the first or third one, and the Oldsmobile uses the opposite one. The chassis, again, it's a very tight fit because particularly the firewall and because of this front end. The front end where the front nose piece goes in place for the front valance, if you put it in before you put the chassis in, you're going to have a bit of a time trying to get this to fit without running the risk of damaging the body or the chassis or both. So, one thing I did was I took these little pieces out, which were the sides, and I actually took the radiator shroud off, and I was able to fit it in with no problem. I will refit those before I put this up on the shelf. But a word to the wise, if you are putting the body together, front and rear valance as well, sanding, priming, and painting, keep that in mind. You might want to wait until the end to put these together. You do actually have room on the Salvino JR's chargers to do just that. If you look right there, I've kind of tack glued this in place for the time being, but look at all that space. You can put the radiator shroud in place after you've put the chassis in place. So I'm thinking on doing that when I do my full detail build, but um, for the time being, just looks good as it is. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, as you can also see, I could not quite get the extra slivers of decals to go in place, but ultimately, I mean, man, this kit looks nice. It's gonna look really good on my shelf. I'm probably taking it to work for a little bit first and leave it on my desk and let people admire it. But if you notice, uh, in the background, I have some Novus plastic clean and shine, heavy scratch remover, fine scratch remover, and some good old Tamiya fine polishing compound as well as some sanding pads. Well, like Bob Ross says, we sometimes have happy accidents. And, well, I had a happy accident myself. Once I had this put together, I did one thing that I have not done for years, and the moment I did it, I stopped and kind of had this gasp. And I was like, oh my God, what have I done? And I cleared the model with the glass in place. So as you see, fog. Lots and lots of fog. Now the rear window I've been playing with most of the afternoon and I've got it reasonably cleaned up by using these compounds as well as 1800 to 4000 grit sanding blocks. I've got smaller ones than that and I've just been going over it lightly just to see if I could salvage it because I have done this before and I have had to save kits before, like that. So, no big deal. I've actually restored kits where I've 
followed other instructions on YouTube where you polish the plastic and you go through the various grits, use the polishing compound, and you get it to look nice and shiny. And then, don't clear it. But, I goofed, so you don't have to. Um, but just anyhow, kind of keep that in mind. I will say this though, these windshields on the 73 chargers are the best fitting ones that Salvino JRs puts out on their kits. Um, I've read on the forums, and I've had the experience myself, where on some of the 124 scale kits, the window glass, whether it fits from the front or from underneath, doesn't fit nearly as well, and you have to do a little trimming. And you know what? That's okay. That's part of our hobby. And you can get them to fit reasonably well. But keep that in mind. These fit perfect. I didn't have a single bit of problem with them fitting, and I used Mod Podge to secure them in place, let them sit overnight. The next day, I was able to put the body over the chassis. They didn't flex off or anything of that sort so I'm I'm cool with it I'm all right so I'm gonna take some time and tinker with the window glass and I'll give you an update in the future when I do one of my like uh, model builds that I have on my shelf already and show you how I was able to salvage the plastic but again word to the wise do not clear your glass there are some YouTubers out there. There's one um, right on Replicas. No, HPI guys. Uh, I think it's Chris. Great channel. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, do it. This guy builds kits right and left, and he uses Future Floor Shine. Just brushes it over the model, lays down nice and smooth, does it with the glass in place. I've been debating about doing that myself, but I still like my clears. I'm actually at the recommendation of some YouTubers who have subscribed to my channel here recently. I am actually going to jump into using 2K Clear. Uh, I've got an airbrush. Uh, they gave me some tips on how to thin it out. And I'm going to give it a shot for a couple of kits here in the future. So stay tuned for that. But I'm going to move this off the table. I'm going to show you something that came today um, in my feed. And I had to go get it. So be right back. By the way, I want to mention that here in the Des Moines area and in Ames at the hobby shops that I checked out, everybody was sold out of TS36 fluorescent red. So I can't tell if I've got a bad batch yet uh, or not. I intend on buying a can and trying it one more time. And if it still doesn't match the vermilion, like I'm hoping it will, I'm going to go and place an order online through MCW Paint Finishes and get the good stuff. But on my Facebook feed uh, a couple of days ago, I saw this and I said, wow, perfect timing. So I went up to a hobby store called The Hobby Shop in Ames, Iowa, in Campus Town, one of the best hobby shops in the area, I might add. They don't have a website, but if you're in Iowa, if you're in the Des Moines area or Ames area, go see them. They're closed on Mondays, but they're open the rest of the week. I am going to be talking with the owner to see if I can make a video while I'm there because my daughter and I have a laundry list of items that we're going to purchase from him and I'd like to videotape what a really good looking hobby store looks like, at least in our area. Definitely better than your chain stores like Hobby Lobby by far. Uh, we've got other hobby shops in our area, one in Ankeny and another one called Hobby Haven in Urbandale. They're also very good. Uh, great for trains, model planes, RC cars. So, enough that. Look what came in the mail. Model cars, issue number 212. But look what's on the front. Salvino Jarrett's model, 73 Petty Charger. If you are not a subscriber to Model Cars Magazine, find it, subscribe to it. These guys, they had been out for a while and came back, and it's great because when Scale Auto left, the market after I think 41 years and uh, started putting their content with scale or a uh, fine scale modeler while that's a great magazine and my daughter loves getting that magazine we actually have a subscription for it I missed scale auto so when I heard these were coming back I had to get them so I picked up some magazines started reading and then this week this one came now, I haven't even opened yet yet so we're gonna do it right now nice it's 212 these guys coming back into the market is fantastic. I think um, 
these guys are going to do just well. And I definitely recommend getting a subscription to them or just go to your hobby store and buy them each month. Always they've got nice little setups for new products, sanding blocks, and look over here. I've purchased a bunch of these from Auto Car Garage. I actually have purchased Mustang Photo Etch for other kits. But then look up here. 73 to 78 Dodge Charger and 71 to 72 Dodge Charger. I actually have one of each on order through Model Car Garage. When they come in, that's actually one of the items I'm waiting for for my full detail build. But then when this magazine came in, I said, you know what? I have to look at it. I also have to reposition my tripod. So anyhow, just kind of tinkering with it. I even have some stuff about podcasts, so it's kind of cool. And really nice detailed kits of what other people have built. Now this here, the rare Morrison Camaro, just want to point this out. These kits are really popular right now, and I've seen them at Model Roundup and others going for 60 to 100 bucks or more. And um, well, I got to kind of laugh. I have four of these. I have a rare Morrison Camaro, I've got a Frank Iaconio Camaro, and I've got two T-Birds. I loved them so much, I stocked up on them, and then they sat in a box for decades. I finally found them about five years ago. They're still on my shelf. They're ones that I'm probably not going to build anytime soon, but it's good to have them. But anyhow, look at this. First of all, for anybody that's, that's uh, part of the Salvador JS crew or has heard about them, look at the new Camaro that's coming out. Um, I have, I think, three of them on order. As soon as they start shipping them, I will build one and put the other two on the shelf. You guys will help me decide which one I build. But look at that. Isn't that something? This one is built by, I'm trying to see who it says, Wayne Stevens. So, I mean, look at this. I am planning on opening the trunk of the Super Detail build, so this is perfect. I'll be able to use this as a reference. And with the fuel filler tube, that was one of my design plans. I have uh, plans to make handmade racers net using a tutorial I saw from Clay Kemp's YouTube channel. Um, don't know if I'm gonna go with the exposed hubs showing the brakes and whatnot, but something to consider. But man, look at this. You know, I'll probably be staring at this all night long and I won't get anything done at home upstairs. But it just goes to show you the kind of detail you can put into these kits. I'm sure it took them a good while to build it. But anyhow, good stuff to look at. I've got uh, first coats of paint on the Junior Johnson Pepsi Challenger. But that's what for another day. What I wanted to do was show you some of the kits I had in mind for you to choose for me to build. So the first one is 1970 Dodge Cornet Super B from MPC. But I plan on doing this when I build it, if this is the one you choose to have me build, using Steve Zimmerman's wheels. This guy is fantastic. If you're on Facebook, Look them up, Z's Wheels. They're usually around $25 a set. And these things are custom made. They look nice, um, like 19s and 20s or 19s and 23s. But um, I've got a small collection of those and been hankering to build something with them. Second one, of course, Mustang. This one is a uh, LX5 liter. Something I've always wanted for the real, but price-wise, they're just up there. Um, so I've had other Mustangs in the past. I've had a 91 GT that I used in autocross uh, competition here locally. Had a 2001 GT, and then my 2011, nicknamed the Boss, that's uh, currently sitting in the garage. I actually took it out today for a run, and man, it felt good getting that out. But I've always liked the sedan, and I've always thought, kind of cool to build this one up. 
not as a patrol car, not as a plain Jane wrapper, but something road race wise. Road race suspension, roll cage, lowered, a mismatched fender, some kind of weekend racer that uh, has a hot motor in it, but the body isn't so sharp and just uses it for Jim Connors. So I've got that one in mind. The last but not least, of course, is any stock car that you see there on the shelf. This is just a partial collection. Now I've built like five or six stock cars in a row. So I'm not going to say I'm stock card out because I'm not. I'm actually going to be building that full detail one here soon, but that's going to take a while. So you got your choice. Tell me if you want me to build another stock car. You want me to build the LX5 liter. And last but not least, if you want me to build the Dodge Coronet. So with that, I'm going to let you go for the night. I'm going to go upstairs and get this posted. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Have a great weekend. And again, as always, if you see something you like out at the hobby store, buy it, build it, show it off. We'll see you in the next one.